Welcome back to Navy Sea Life. Ever wondered what life is like down under a submarine? Well, today we're tackling a question that might surprise you. How do sailors go to the bathroom on a submarine? It turns out it's a whole different ball game, or should we say head game, compared to a regular ship. It's a carefully designed system that's crucial for a successful mission. And believe it or not, a simple mistake with a new toilet design once led to a disaster. Buckle up, shipmates. We're plunging into the watery world of submarine toilets and how they function. Unlike surface ships, submarines use seawater for flushing, a system crucial for long missions. But a misplaced lever can turn a routine task into a watery disaster, as we'll explore next. Prepare to be surprised by the ingenious ways the U.S. Navy utilizes seawater on their vessels. While World War II submarines were crude compared to today's vessels, both old and new face a common challenge, waste disposal. The disposal of toilet waste and the flushing mechanism themselves pose unique problems. Unlike surface ships, directly flushing waste into the ocean is impossible due to the immense external pressure at depth, which could cause a backflow. Imagine a cramped submarine, perhaps one you pictured with just a bed and a toilet. While this image might hold some truth, it doesn't reveal the ingenuity behind these compact toilets. They utilize every inch of available space for maximum efficiency, but the real innovation lies in how they function. Fresh water is a precious commodity on a submarine, so the flush system cleverly utilizes pressurized seawater. This seawater not only conserves fresh water, but its density provides more force for flushing waste through the plumbing, ensuring everything gets eliminated efficiently. Wondering how to use a submarine toilet? First, open the lever-operated drain valve. Then, open and hold the flush valve for a sufficient time to thoroughly clean both the bowl and drain line. Once finished, close the drain valve and allow several inches of seawater to cover it before shutting off the flush. Simple as that. The number of bathrooms, or heads as they're called in submarines, varies depending on the class and model. Modern submarines typically have multiple heads, with a Los Angeles-class submarine, the most common type, usually boasting two or three. Each head includes a sink, toilet, and shower. Nuclear submarines have a dedicated head with four toilets, while two others have pairs of urinals. In total, a nuclear submarine can have around 12 toilets and 24 urinals. These toilets reside within the submarine's head, which is also the location of the ship's figurehead. Fast attack submarines typically have two separate head compartments, each equipped with four toilets and two urinals. These facilities cater to crews of up to 100 members on extended missions, where luxurious bathrooms are a secondary concern compared to the submarine's primary function of military operations. Next, we'll explore how waste disposal is actually managed in this unique environment. Interestingly, all U.S. Navy submarines have specialized systems for handling waste. The two primary types of waste generated on a submarine are black water and gray water. Black water is wastewater from toilets and urinals, which contain human waste. If you hadn't already guessed, this is stored in holding tanks on board the sub until it can be discharged safely. The discharge happens when the submarine is at a good distance from the shore. Ultimately, the wastewater is released into the ocean, where it is diluted and dispersed by the currents. In addition, modern U.S. Navy submarines are equipped with advanced wastewater treatment systems that can process and treat black water before it is discharged further reducing the potential environmental impact. Gray water, on the other hand, is wastewater from sinks, showers, and other non-toilet sources. This water is usually treated on board using a system that filters out solid materials and disinfects the water using chemicals like chlorine. The treated gray water can then be discharged into the ocean when the submarine is far enough from the shore. Here's an interesting fact. Even the rather minuscule Titan sub owned by Ocean Gate had a toilet. 
Would you use that toilet considering it's in such tight quarters? Be sure to let us know. Aircraft carriers, intimidating and awe-inspiring machines, massive warships designed to project military power across the globe, armed with powerful missiles and bombs, and the ability to strike targets with deadly accuracy. But do you know what goes on down below? Literally, down below? Well, the crew on board these aircraft carriers, just like the rest of us, cannot avoid the basic human need to use the restroom from time to time. This may surprise you, but these floating cities have more than 400 toilets on board. But as one would expect, the maintenance of these toilets often stirs up some trouble as well. The toilets on America's two latest active aircraft carriers, the USS Bush and USS Ford, have been experiencing clogging problems. And the only way to keep these pipes draining is to use a special, extremely expensive acid solution. The two carriers' toilet plumbing systems, modeled on the plumbing system installed on airliners, clogged frequently, requiring the Navy to regularly service them with an acid that costs a whopping $400,000 per use. It's rather tough to predict how often this expensive procedure is necessary, making it difficult as a result to estimate the frequency throughout the 50-year lifespan of each carrier. This may or may not make the 50 years of each carrier super expensive, but the U.S. Navy saw this coming. The clogging problems with the new toilet system were well known even before the USS Ford finished construction. In 2011, the Navy Times reported on toilet issues with the USS Bush, the first carrier to feature the toilet vacuum system, writing that during the ship's maiden deployment in 2009, the ship averaged 25 calls a week to fix the commodes, and 432 commodes on the ship went down twice. But regardless, did you know that just like submarines, aircraft carriers also rely on seawater for toilet flushing needs. It's true, however, that using seawater in a massive floating city like an aircraft carrier requires a complex water treatment system to ensure that the water is safe for the crew and does not damage the equipment too quickly. That's why aircraft carriers are equipped with cutting-edge water treatment systems that can convert seawater into potable water for drinking, cooking, and other essential uses. These systems use a combination of filtration, chemical treatment, and reverse osmosis to remove salt, bacteria, and other impurities from seawater, making it safe and drinkable. The process of turning seawater into potable water is not only essential for the health and well-being of the crew, but also for the success of the mission. Imagine being in the middle of the ocean without access to clean drinking water. That's why these advanced water systems are critical to the operation of an aircraft carrier. As one would expect, the U.S. Navy has a long and storied history that is intertwined with marine life. While it's unclear who invented the flush toilet, the Navy has been using seawater for toilet flushing on its submarines and aircraft carriers for decades. This practice has been adopted by other cities around the world too, including Hong Kong, Singapore, and Tokyo, where seawater is used for flushing toilets due to a shortage of fresh water. Researchers such as Zhang Gru Zhang of the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology have studied the effects of chlorinated effluent, whether fresh or saline, on marine ecosystems. Zhang and his colleagues designed a study that looked at the impact of chlorinated saline effluents on two organisms at the base of the marine food web. Surprisingly, the results show that chlorinated saline effluent is generally less acutely toxic to organisms than its freshwater counterpart. This was a rather shocking discovery at the time. It's worth highlighting that the U.S. Navy plays a big role when it comes to marine life. The Navy's commitment to protecting the marine ecosystem is reflected in its rigorous environmental policies and practices. These policies and practices are designed to minimize the impact of Navy activities on marine life and ensure that their operations are carried out in an environmentally responsible manner. One of the most significant missions undertaken by the Navy to protect marine life is the Marine Species Monitoring Program. 
This program involves the monitoring and assessment of the effects of marine activities on marine species and their habitats. Through this program, the Navy is able to identify potential impacts on marine life and take steps to mitigate those impacts. In addition to these efforts, the Navy is also working to raise awareness of the importance of environmental stewardship among its personnel and the public. By promoting a culture of sustainability and responsible environmental management, the Navy is actually helping to protect the marine environment for several future generations. Krieg's Marine U-Boat. Now, this may surprise you, but did you know that a submarine actually sank due to a mere flushing malfunction? U-boats, named for undersea boats, were a German version of an apex predator, able to move undetected and unleash devastating firepower upon enemy ships. Originally developed during World War I, these vessels destroyed transatlantic shipping routes and could take down ships 20 times their size. Germany targeted military and civilian vessels alike, notoriously attacking the passenger ship Lusitania in 1915, killing nearly 1,200 people. U-1206 was practically fresh off the assembly line and had sailed out of Norway, operating at a depth of 200 feet when tragedy struck. The U-1206 had a new toilet design installed. It was made to support operations in greater depth, but a new design is also an unfamiliar one. Captain Shield decided he had to use the bathroom. After using it, he looked at the design and couldn't figure out how the flush mechanism worked. He called for the specialist that was on board, but he too was unable to figure out the correct way to flush. This was merely because only some of the engineers were fully trained in operating the new design. Captain Shield then reached for the wrong valve and salty seawater started pouring into the submarine. The whole battery department was flooding. Do you need us to break down the chemistry for you as to why this was a bad move? No problem. Because the vessel boasted a total of 120 battery cells comprising one quarter of the submarine's weight, it could shut down the diesel engines and travel up to 80 nautical miles in complete silence. But when the water leaked down from the bathroom and reacted with one of these batteries, chlorine gas filled the vessel. Chlorine is a deadly poison. It's time to air out the boat fast. The submarine had to surface to clear the chlorine gas out of the air. Unfortunately, this was during the daytime and the British Coastal Patrol aircraft just happened to be flying nearby. The U-1206 crew was managing to blow good air in and poisonous and explosive gases out. But meanwhile, they were under fire from the British plane. One man was killed during the aerial attack and the submarine was damaged to the point where it couldn't safely be submerged. So there you have it. From the ingenious use of seawater to the importance of proper training, we've learned a lot about the not so glamorous side of submarine life. But hey, someone's got to do it. Now we want to hear from you. If you were stuck on a submarine and couldn't figure out the new toilet, what would you do to avoid a watery and chlorine disaster? Leave your ideas in the comments below and smash that like button for more wacky and wonderful engineering stories.